Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on cool but smaller stuff inside Apple's Final Cut Pro 10. You know, the big features like multicam and the new interface get all the attention, but it's the small stuff that can make your editing life a whole lot easier or a whole lot harder. What I want to do is to go cover features that don't deserve a webinar to themselves to show you how you can put them to work in your own editing and your own effects to be able to get stuff done faster, more efficiently, and with better results. There's all kinds of cool stuff to talk about, so let's get ourselves started. Oh, and by the way, we have this brand new subscription service where all our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via subscription. This includes our Final Cut Pro 10, Adobe CS6, and Autodesk Smoke Training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. And to learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. We've covered Final Cut Pro 10 a lot in past webinars. Webinar 62 talks about audio editing, 63 is titles, 64 is multicam, 66 is new features in the 10.0.3 update, 71 is color correction, and 73 was audio effects, filters, and mixing. Each of those focused on a specific area inside Final Cut 10. Today, though, I want to look at some effects and some editing techniques. First, capturing from videotape, relinking missing media, using the gear menu in the toolbar, creating and modifying auditions, trimming tricks, working with the timeline index, and cool keyboard shortcuts that we can use to move stuff. Then we'll change hats and move to effects. I'll show you what spatial conform is and why we use it for stills and video. How to change clip speed, both to create still frames and constant speed changes. How to animate clip movement using keyframes and curves. How to create a green screen, also called a chroma key effect. And how to clean up a chroma key frame with a garbage mat. So that's what we want to cover. Let's get ourselves started. The first thing that I want to do is I want to capture from videotape. Now, capturing tape less, we know, but it just so happens I have a, an old, trusty Sony DSR-11 DV deck sitting right next to me, and I want to capture from tape. How does that work? Well, I just this instant turned the deck on, I inserted a tape, and we go click the Capture from Camera button, or type Command-I. Notice that when I have a tape deck connected, I get some interesting readouts up here. This refers to the time code on the tape, and the tape is currently in pause mode. Because it's attached via Firewire, I can click this button, and it automatically starts playing the tape. Now, spacebar stop, spacebar starts, all the same keyboard shortcuts work exactly the same. And by the way, I want to thank Standard Films for making this snowboard footage available. We have now have a couple of options. One is we can capture individual shots. For instance, to do that, let's just back up a bit. Spacebar to stop, play here. Now, when we're ready to capture, there's no way to set an in or an out. We just got to capture on the fly. Final Cut 7 would call this batch capture. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click the import button. There's our intrepid hero. Create optimized media is grayed out because this is DV. By definition, DV is already optimized. It doesn't do anything else. I don't need proxy media because DV files are pretty small. My recommendation is I tend not to analyze this on ingest. I'll analyze later if I need it, but I always analyze the audio. So my default settings are create optimized media if necessary and check the audio settings. Let's create a new event. We'll call this snowboard. And we're going to store it to my second drive because you never want to store media to your main drive and we'll click import. At this point, things start to play. It's going to continue capturing these clips one after the other just as long as I'm playing the tape. And we'll stop that import. And We'll do one more. Let's play the tape, capture one more shot. It's a great shot if we could actually see what's going on. Click Import, and we're going to put that in Snowboard. All the settings are the same, and go. And 
and stop. Okay, so the way that we capture from tape is, is very similar to batch capture. You do it one shot at a time, unless what you want to do is you want to capture the entire tape, in which case we create an archive. What an archive does is it allows me to say, oh, let's see, we'll call this snowboard tape 23. Now, I'm not going to actually do this because what happens is when I click this, and I can specify the location, I'm going to store this to my third drive where I've got plenty of free space. It will now back the tape up to the very beginning of the tape. It will capture the entire contents of the tape to a single file called an archive. The archive is exactly the same size as if I had captured this tape. So an hour of DV is 13 gigabytes. That's exactly how big this archive is going to be. But it's now a single file which is stored on whatever hard disk I specify. The good news is, rather than have to worry about a whole bunch of clips, I now have the single archive which I can now look at my tape. The bad news is that this archive can only be opened by Final Cut Pro 10. If you uninstall Final Cut Pro 10, you lose the ability, at least right now, to be able to view those archives. Keep in mind that videotape has a lifespan of about 25 years, and about half my tape library is coming up to that 25th year anniversary. One of the things you might want to consider doing is before all the equipment goes away and before the tapes fall apart, transfer all of those old DV and HDV tapes into an archive to give you some time to work about it. Because once it's digital, it's not going to be subject to the degradation that a, a magnetic tape is. So if you need to capture from tape, that's how it works. When you go back to here, there's our two shots. We can skim through here and see the quality looks just wonderful. And because my little tape deck makes noise, I'm going to open the cover, eject the tape, so it no longer is sitting there, and I'll turn the power off. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store, and look for Webinar 76.